So the three questions that you asked were how international travel really helps us to understand a culture. And in general, all of these three questions felt really, really connected to me. So they do have a tendency to bleed into each other a little bit. But I think by and large, uh, thanks to cheaper air travel, uh, through 24-hour news media, through the internet, through corporate globalization, for better or for worse, our world uh, in the late 20th century, early 21st century is a lot smaller. And it seems a lot smaller than it used to be. It's smaller. And because it's smaller, we have a lot more opportunity to uh, connect with people who are from cultures that are not our own. And because we have more opportunity to connect either through work or through education or things like that, um, this increase in diversity that we see really, understanding and culture becomes really important because it helps us to approach people who are not like us with empathy and with understanding. So if you ask most people from the United States who are natively from here, they'll say that they don't have a culture. It's easy to really think that we don't have a culture, but we really, really do. And by going to somewhere else, that creates not only an appreciation for other cultures, but it helps us understand that we do have a culture as well. And it helps us get in touch with what our legacy is as a culture. All right, well, I think it's important to have intercultural experiences on a global relational like level because it opens up doors that wouldn't have been opened before because every country does things differently. And so an understanding of how another country does things opens your mind to pick and choose what you like. Like now I pick and choose from all the cultures that I've experienced myself because of all of my global relationships. And so I think as a whole, like as a world, we'll be better off once we can pick and choose from the things we like and dislike from other countries. And like my mom likes to say, it's not better, it's not worse, it's just different. Culture is a set of attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors that are passed on from one generation to another. What is your definition of culture? To me, culture is a shared behaviors among society. I've traveled a lot, so I think I can like choose what I want from whichever culture I like. So yeah, I don't have a set culture, I just have everything from everywhere. Hi, my name is Belinda Kimmage, I'm from Ghana, West Africa, and this is for our documentary on how to have international experiences and how that helps you be more knowledgeable about other nations and other cultures. And my definition of culture is culture's attitude, values, your belief. It really reflects a lot on how you act, how you speak, how you dress, and it's very noticeable. So even if you think you don't have a culture, you have a culture because there is something about you that differentiates you from others and people will notice that. I think it is very important to know your own culture before you can know someone else's culture because you learn, like when you know your own culture, you're able to pick up on things that are different or similar to your culture and, you know, from the other person's culture. A big concept is ethnocentricity, where you, your own knowledge is what's considered normal and everything outside of that is weird but you have to understand that there is no normal people in thailand they wear cat shirts too <laughs> i bought this in thailand and the reason it's important to know your own culture before you leave is so that you can really identify these are the things i do so that you can recognize the differences between other people and the things that they do might be different but they're not weird or wrong, they're simply different. Hey Kayla. Hey Holly, what's up? So, I'm going on a trip. Where are you going? 
going to Thailand Why? for an intercultural experience. And I'm wondering what kind of attitudes one should have to have a successful intercultural experience. That is a good question to have, and I'm going to explain it to you. The proper attitude that you have to have while going to Thailand is open-mindedness, like this book you see. An open mind is a curious and engaged mind. Boy, this is a curious looking apple. I'm not used to this, but I think I'll give it a go. To also have a proper attitude, you have to have perspective taking. Perspective taking is treating others the way they want to be treated. There's a difference between treating people the way you would like to be treated and then treating people the way they would like to be treated. So kind of like taking into consideration the other people's culture before you think about your own? Yeah, that's exactly right, Shelby. I see. Another proper attitude that you must have is emotional management. <laughs> Which is being aware of how other people perceive you. Oh my gosh. Hi. Nice to meet you. Would you like to come sit down with me? Yes! I would love to. <laughs> hey, Holly. Um, I found the tips that I typed up for you the other day. Oh, great, great, great. So, um, you remember, number one, have an open mind. Open-mindedness. So, like, an example of that could be when I'm going to Thailand to be open-minded with the monks' religion and the types of food they serve to us and not having preconceived notions about what it should be like, right? Right. So what's the second one? The second one, Holly, is perspective taking. Perspective taking. Okay, so like an example of that could be taking into other people's perspectives before your own. Like treating their culture the way they would like to be treated. So what's the third one, Kayla? Emotional management. <laughs> so an example of emotional management could be controlling your thoughts and keeping them inside your head versus projecting them outward when people are acting very weird or strange compared to what you're used to. Having intercultural experiences, whether you're traveling abroad or just interacting with other cultures, being able to properly greet people in accordance to their own culture shows respect and positively reflects on your own culture. Every culture greets each other differently. Chances are, your culture and their culture's greetings are not the same. For example, while we were in Thailand, the Thai Y is the common hello and goodbye. There are three different levels of the Thai Y according to a person's status in society. For someone of equal status, for example, a friend, this is the proper level of Y. So For someone of greater status than you, for example, a professor, this is the proper level of Y. So And for a Buddha image, a member of the royal family, or a monk, this is the proper level of Y. So Let's see some examples of a proper Y and an improper Y. First, we will show how to do an improper Y for someone of equal status to you. So let's see how. Now we will show an example of a proper Y. So let's see how.